ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਐਂਡ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਸੀਜੇ ਸਿੱਧੂ ਸ਼ੋ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੀ ਕਿ ਐਵਰੀ ਥਰਸਡੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਰੂਬਰੂ ਕਰਾਈਦਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਨਾਲ ਮੋਸਟਲੀ ਆਈ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲਾਈਜ਼ਡ ਇਨ ਕੈਨੇਡੀਅਨ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਸ਼ੀਅਨਸ ਸੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਥੋੜੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਾਈ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਫਰਸਟ ਹੈਂਡ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਥੋੜੇ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚਾਈ ਜਾ ਸਕੇ ਲਾਸਟ ਵੀਕ ਅਸੀਂ ਸੁਖਤਾਲੀਵਾਲ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਸਰੀ ਨਿਊਟਨ ਤੋਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਹੋਈ ਸੀਗੀ ਤੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੁੱਦੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਚ ਪੂਰੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਏ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਕਾਫੀ ਕਾਲਸ ਵਗੈਰਾ ਆ ਗਈਆਂ ਸੀ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਕਾਲ ਅਸ ਅਗੇਨ ਐਂਡ ਆਸਕ ਅ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਟੂ ਮਾਈ ਗੈਸਟ 6046959555 ਤੇ ਇਹ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਮੁੱਦਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਨੀ ਹੈ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਹੈ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਜੌਨ ਐਲਡੌਗ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਕਲੋਵਰਡੇਰ ਲੈਂਗਲੀ ਸਿਟੀ ਤੋਂ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਹੈ 2015 ਚ ਇਹ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਬਣੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਪਰ 2019 ਚ ਇਹ ਹਾਰ ਗਏ ਸੀ 2021 ਚ ਫਿਰ ਹੀ ਵਾਸ ਰੀਇਲੈਕਟਡ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਫਰਮ ਥੈਟ ਰਾਈਡਿੰਗ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਬਰਥ ਸੈਕਟ ਵੰਦਾ ਆ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਰੋਇਲ ਰੋਡਸ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਤੋਂ ਐਮਬੀਏ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ 32 ਸਾਲ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪਾਰਕਸ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਇਨਕਲੂਡਿੰਗ ਪੋਸਟਿੰਗਸ ਵਾਈਟ ਹੌਰਸ ਲੇਕ ਲੂਈਸ ਯੋਹੋ ਵਾਟਰਲੂ ਐਂਡ ਲੈਂਗਲੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਕੰਮ ਕੀਤਾ ਆ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਮੈਰਿਡ ਹਿਸ ਵਾਈਫ ਇਜ਼ ਅਲੇਨ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਟੂ ਡਾਟਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਅ ਸਨ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਲਿਵਡ ਇਨ ਲੈਂਗਲੀ ਫੋਰ ਓਵਰ 10 ਇਅਰਸ ਨਾਓ ਐਂਡ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਹਾਰਡ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਇਹ ਕਮੇਟੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਚੇਅਰ ਆਫ ਇੰਡੀਜਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਰਦਨ ਅਫੇਅਰਸ ਕਮੇਟੀ ਦੇ ਚੇਅਰ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਇਹ ਮੁੱਦੇ ਬੜੇ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਲਈ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਨੈਚੁਰਲ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਸ ਕਮੇਟੀ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਇਹ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਹੈ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਜੌਨ ਟੂ ਸੀਜੇ ਸਿੱਧੂ ਸ਼ੋ ਸੀਜੇ ਇਟਸ ਆਲਵੇਸ ਅ ਪਲੇਸਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਫॉर ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਦਿਸ ਈਵਨਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਐਂਡ ਲੈਟਸ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਬ੍ਰੇਕਿੰਗ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਯੈਸਟਰਡੇ ਯੂ ਗਾਇਸ ਅਨਾਉਂਸ 95 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰਸ ਫॉर ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਐਸਲਰੇਟਰ ਫੰਡ ਫॉर ਸਰੀ ਸੋ 95 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ so in that announcement uh, uh, mayor brenda lock uh, member of parliament sok daliwal randeep sarai and you were there to announce that uh, tell my viewers a little bit more about this this uh, money yeah absolutely cj the um, funding that we announced yesterday comes from what we call the housing accelerator fund and this uh, fund is for municipalities and uh, particularly large municipalities like surrey to help them move, remove the barriers to building housing And so this uh, project it's to help municipalities um get uh, there, there's all sorts of um, zoning issues there's many cases technology hasn't been adopted and so the approvals are very slow um it, it's uh it, it, so it's about helping municipalities remove all of those barriers and then it's a way of helping them uh, get their community plans updated and so that they, instead of having to do things um all of the reviews that take so much time we know that often um it can be uh one or two or three years from the time a developer puts a proposal in until it gets developed or uh, get till it gets approved and so this way um it'll help the municipalities remove all of that the the money that we announced yesterday um the we expect that over the next three years there's going to be about um 2800 2800 um houses come from it and it'll remove the um the obstacles for the next 10 years so we expect over 16000 houses to be built as a result of this 95 million dollar investment we made yesterday so janu mai puchha si inna ne kal announcement kiti hai uh, very close to uh, sari city hall de kole uh, 95 million dollar di announcement hui hai jithe ki brenda lock mayor ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਤਿੰਨੇ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਪਾਰਲੀਮੈਂਟ ਸੁਖਤਾਲੀਵਾਲ ਰੰਦੀਪ ਸਰਾਏ ਐਂਡ ਐਂਡ ਜੌਨ ਉਥੇ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਹ 95 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਹੈ ਐਸਲਰੇਟਰ ਫੰਡ ਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਹ ਬੈਕਲੌਗ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਜੋਨਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਕਾਫੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਡਿਲੇ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਸੇ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹਰਡਲਸ ਨੂੰ ਸਿਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਮਨੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਾ
how you're going to make them accountable. Yeah, I think you know that they'll, they'll be watching very closely on how the cities move forward with these plans. Um, you know, the money can be used, as I said, for um, buying um, programs to help them do reviews pr more closely, to hire staff, to do the things. So there will be reporting requirements to actually demonstrate to the federal government that the money is being used properly. Um, and, uh, you know, and that um, it actually is delivering the houses that we want to see. Um, the accountability piece, absolutely, that's a question that, uh, you know, we're always concerned about. But um, this program, you know, Surrey's been a great partner. And I think they have a good track record on other money that uh, the federal government has given them to deliver the programs. And so, um, you know, I think that it's, it builds on that relationship that we have with Surrey. We're confident that they're going to be able to do the things that they've said. They applied for the funding. They outlined the things that they're going to achieve. And so the uh, 2,600 houses that they've said they can do in the next uh, three years, um, they have put out a, a roadmap to get there. And uh, it was reviewed, it was um, assessed, and we believe um, that, uh, that they will be able to deliver on it. So, I asked John, this is also the federal government. This is funding to provide funding. But when we see the bottom line, we see the zoning, the bylaws, the permits, the people who wait for it. It's simple as a reno to existing house, or something. And it takes forever. So, what do you think about the city has a plan to present it? The city of Surrey has a plan to present it. The city has a plan to present it. The city of Surrey has a plan to present it. The city has a plan to present it. The city has a plan to present it. ये जी मनी है यूज़ करके यू कि स्पीड अप करे ताकि पहले तीन साल अठाई सौ जोड़े घर बनने हैं एंड उस तो बाद जो ओवर द ईयरस यू स्ट्रीमलाइन करे सो मेरा यही क्वेश्चन ऑलवेज हों भी पैसे तो तुम दे दें पर अकाउंटेबिलिटी की है सो यू नो कमिंग बैक टू दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर इज ए इज अटैच टू अफोर्डेबिलिटी इशू सो दिस दिस फंडिंग विल हैल्प सम low um, cost uh, housing for low income people i guess yeah you know part of the issue that we have with the um, the housing uh, supply right now is it's short it's it doesn't meet demand we know that when you have that it causes prices to rise and so what we need to do is build more houses more quickly the estimate we're we're missing something like 3 million houses that are needed across canada right now and so the federal government is looking how do we partner with municipalities to get those houses built as quickly as possible we don't want to flood the uh, the market and and drop um, you know houses. We need to be very careful. Uh, anybody who owns a home has equity in it, but we also know that um, you know it, it's affordable. It's expensive. It's not affordable right now. Rent. There's not enough rental supply. True. So we've done things like uh, remove the uh, GST on purpose-built rental housing, um, and that's going to be in effect for the next uh, several years, and so. This will help developers um, remove a, or provide a, a, um, a financial incentive for them to build rental housing, and, and it's tied to affordability. So it can't be high-end, fancy, um, you know, all the finest uh, uh, fixtures and things like that. It's going to be affordable housing. It'll be good housing, um, but it's about building more of those supplies. In fact, over uh, just before Christmas, I announced um, about 180 million dollars to build 600 um, rental units. Um, between Abbotsford, Langley, and Surrey, and uh, you know, and so that's a, a different program. But it's also about the federal government putting money into these kinds of um, uh, rental projects. But the uh, the removal of GST is another way of helping developers uh, have a financial incentive to build this ri this rental housing. And uh, if we can get that, then that'll bring the rental rates down. That is one of the things, uh, another strategy we have to deal with this whole affordability, um, high cost of living uh, situation that we're living in right now. So, I asked you that there is money that is being used, how to use it, 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 how to use it. So, John said that there is a purpose-built house. That's why they removed GST and they also removed it. And I asked for clarification, what is it? Besides, this is another $95 million, another $180 million. They have allotted their Abbotsford, Langley, Surrey, and other allotted. जिथे कि अफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग बन सके ताकि जोड़े अपना अफोर्डेबिलिटी इशू है क्योंकि सारिया सरकार बहुत ज़्यादा प्रैशर है ताकि आम बंदा जोड़ा है थोड़ी जी रेंट थले आन क्योंकि डिमांड एंड सप्लाई ए कम्स बैक टू डिमांड एंड सप्लाई एंड देर इज ए देर इज ए मोर डिमांड नॉट इनफ सप्लाई एंड अ पुटिंग ए प्रैशर ऑन द प्राइजिंग वैदर इज ए रेंटल और हाउसिज 
And, and when you say the purpose-built house, what, what do you mean by Purpose-built rental housing. So that's going to be um, units that are, are definitely made for renting for the next, usually it's like a 20-year period um, or beyond that. Um, you know, a lot of times developers will look at condos, they can sell them, they can get their money out uh, right away. And so it requires a different uh, kind of financial model to make it desirable for, uh, for um, developers um, to, to build these rental units that are exclusively for renting, not for purchasing. And, uh, and that way, if we can get these units built, they'll be in, in our communities for the next gener you know, generation or more. And, uh, and that's what we want to make sure is that we don't have, right now we hear about rent evictions. And, yes. um, and, and so we want to have like good quality rental housing that will be here for the longer term. And, uh, and that will help make sure that we can uh, not only have affordable housing. We, we hear, I hear right now, and you probably hear the same thing, families that can't afford to live in Vancouver, so they come to Surrey. And then we have families who can't live here. They're moving to Abbotsford and Chilliwack. And, Chilliwack. Yeah. and, and you know, you, you, there, there's um, stories of Vancouver not having police officers and nurses and teachers and firefighters living in their community. We don't want communities like that. We want to have people who can afford to live in the communities that they work in. And um, not everybody wants to buy, not everybody can buy, and, but we need to make sure that there's you know, different types of housing and rental housing is one of those pieces that really has been um, lacking across the, um, the lower mainland, particularly south of the Fraser. So these programs that we're introducing will help get the, that um, housing built that will be for renters, and that way they know that they have a place to, uh, to, to move to and to stay in. So, in a Puchanasi, you have a purpose built house. So, in a Kanaki, you have rental units. You have a funding, you have a lot of rental development. You have a lot of people who are in the house. You have a lot of renting. So, you have a rental market. So, how do you, uh, John, or government, put a check and balances that if that money is allotted and given to the the builders or developers for that specific pur purpose, yeah. how it will be made sure in a regulation or in a contract that that will be not misused? Yeah, great question. Uh, because, yeah, we want to make sure that the money that we're giving, these are, are large dollar amounts that the federal government is investing. And so the, the funding agreements that are being signed, um, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, in the um, funding uh, announcements that get signed, by the, um, the developers, they have to commit to different mixes of rental costs. So some can be above market, some can be at market, some can be, and some have to be below. And there's a formula that indicates what that mix is based on how many units are being um, built. And the, the developers are, are required to uh, stay within those, uh, those limits or those parameters that they're given. And there, there are um, checks that happen to make sure that um, you know, the money is used for the things that uh, the developers said they would be used for. Um, the, again, the experience is that we have uh, very reputable developers and they want to see, uh, you know, these programs succeed. And, uh, you know, if they, they, if they have to prove that, you know, this project is working, then they can move to the next one. Where we did the announcement yesterday, uh, we had BOSA Construction that's building a tower of purpose-built rental housing. Um, those are great partners. Um, that we can have. There's lots in, the, in our region that are building these types of, um, of units and, and as they build a record, uh, a track record of, of um, you know, constructing these and, and, and having the mix of, of rental rates within them, then you know, they can get other funding and, and build even more and that's a great story for our communities. So, I asked this question about the funding. They have been used and they have been proper funding. So, in any Kayaki, Jerry Jinami organization, and CMHC, Hagia, Jinevi, developer, the builder Hagia, Una the check and balances Honge, Bajinia units at Jerry purposely Bananya, Udele come current. Sadi Galchaldri, a member of parliament from uh, Cloverdale, Langley City. Uh, John Aldag, setting up phone lines open and you see an answer that question put on a 6046959555 to call Karke in a new city question put so let's uh, let's move on a little bit uh, to the other issues because this is a very important issue and it's a welcome welcome addition and it's a good announcement but my last question about this issue is so, um, federal government, how they are coordinating with the provincial government and, and the cities like Surrey, you gave a funding. 
So how you coordinate and how you put these check and balances that all three levels of government are one way or the other supporting these projects. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, you know, it's about these relationships. I would say that we've had a great relationship with the BC NDP government. Um, we, we also give a lot of money directly to the provincial government that goes into programs like BC Housing, and they administer them. Again, they have a great uh, record. Um, they have a lot of units in British Columbia um, that are helping those in need, and, and we can continue to expand those programs. Municipalities, um, through the programs that we're offering, is getting municipalities more involved in, in helping um, streamline, fast track the, uh, the developments. And um, so it really is about working together that we can, uh, we can make this happen. I, I would like to mention, though, that there are other programs we're doing. I um, was just uh, reminding my kids that there's the First Time Home Buyers Program. And uh, these are like an RRSP program where um, young people can shelter yes. money into, the, uh, into um, a, a fund to help grow it. And uh, that can be then taken out as a down payment for a home. And uh, you know, so there's, there's, we're, we're approaching the housing um, crises in many different ways, working across prov with provinces, municipalities, with individuals, with developers, to try to uh, build a significant amount of housing in as fast a time as possible. Um, because that's what Canadians need right now. So, I have a question about the 10-level government, federal, provincial and city level. How do you coordinate and make a plan so that it can properly filter through so that it can be able to help people. If you want to say that it can be affordable housing, so that it can be housing, so that it can be affordable rental units, so that it can be so that it can be affordable. ताकि वो हो जड़े रिलीफ है गया उस उन अनु मिल सके सो ये ना तो कहना है कि ये जड़ी फेडरल गवर्नमेंट है प्रोविंशल गवर्नमेंट नू भी फंडिंग है गई है जड़ी बीसी हाउसिंग दे अंडर वो ना दी अनाउंसमेंट है वो दी भी फेडरल गवर्नमेंट हेल्प कर रही है बाकी फिर सिटी बाय सिटी भी हेल्प की ती जा सकती है उन्हों को टा आगे ताकि जिधे प्रोजेक्ट है के टाइमली फैशन नाल उन्हों फिनिश की थे जा सकर। सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू इमिग्रेशन, द मोस्ट। सीजे आई कैन नॉट कम एंड सी यू विदाउट टॉकिंग अबाउट इमिग्रेशन। आई नीड वी वुड गेट देयर। सो इमिग्रेशन, यू नो आई आई टेल यू प्रॉब्ली योर ऑफिसेस � you know, the request either for immigration or paperwork or helping or delays and stuff. But let's start with immigration, uh, Minister, Mr. Mark Miller's recent announcement about uh, undocumented uh, people and so they can apply for uh, permanent residency and they, they're calling it a broad and comprehensive program and according to the stats, about 300 to 600,000 people are undocumented. Uh, people. So, what what is that policy? Can you uh, tell our viewers? Absolutely, CJ. Th this is something that we've heard a lot about. Uh, we've recognized that it is a problem um, in Canada. And you know, when people hear about undocumented workers, it often makes people think of people sneaking across the border. But that's actually not the case. In many cases, it is people who have come to Canada on legitimate work permits um, who have either not renewed in time, but, uh, you know, and, and uh, sort of not in compliance. Um, some of them have, uh, life circumstances have changed and, uh, and, and they've ended up without the valid and say, And sometimes, John, just, just for your information, that yeah. certain governments of different countries make it very, very difficult. Like, you know, if they have an Indian passport, now it's lost for, like, number of years. Yeah, yeah. Now, they, how they can produce, and they said you can't make a new one until you submit the old one. Right, yeah, so, exactly. So we end up with people that are caught in these really difficult, uh, you know, sometimes bureaucratic situations. They're here, they're contributing, but because their uh, work permit has um, disappeared, um, you know, they're working often under the table. Yeah. The issue there is that uh, there, there's several issues that arise from it. Um, you know, they don't have protections as a Canadian worker, so they can be exploited. Um, sometimes they can be put in unworks or unwork, unsafe work situations or being asked Totally. To work. Underground yeah. economy. Yeah, under, exactly. We, we don't collect the we taxes. Don't, no taxes for us. There's uh, no... Um, in you know, pensions or employment insurance, all of those types of things. So we have workers who are getting exploited. 
And I, I've actually worked with a, a group, we have a, an immigration caucus, and this is one of the issues that we flagged to the previous minister, saying that we, we have this um, group of Canadians, and most of the cases, it's not through their own fault, they've ended up in the situation. So it's how do we bring them from being under the table to above the table in their, uh, their work permits? And so I'm really pleased to see that the minister is, um, is seeing this as a, an important issue for Canada and for Canadians. And so uh, he's indicated that, yeah, that there's work happening this spring and we hope to uh, roll something out. Now, I'll point out that, the, well, actually, maybe before we do that, if you um, want to do a summary and then I'll come back. Yeah, let me, let me summarize it. Jenny Galba Chalri, Jede Luka, who document any proper. They were there, they were Canada, they were there. under the table, they were visa, they were there, 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 ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹੈ ਕੰਮ ਕਰੀ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰ ਮੈਡੀਕਲ ਕਵਰੇਜ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਐਮ ਐਮ ਐਸ ਪੀ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਗਾ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ 60 ਵਜੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਬੜਾ ਅਬਿਊਜ਼ ਮਤਲਬ ਆਪਣੇ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਇੱਕ ਪਾਸੇ ਦੂਜੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਅਨਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟਡ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਕੈਸ਼ ਤੇ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਗੱਲ ਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਪੈਸੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰ ਪੇ ਕਰਦੇ ਦੂਜੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਫਾਇਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹ ਟੈਕਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੇ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅੰਡਰਗਰਾਉਂਡ ਬਲੈਕ ਮਨੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਉਹ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਅਨਡਿਊ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਚੈਲੰਜ ਹੈ ਕਾਫੀ ਦੇਰ ਤੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਸੀ ਵੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਬੰਦਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੱਕਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਸੋ ਜੌਨ ਦਾ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਰੀਜ਼ਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੈਂ ਦੱਸ ਰਿਹਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਰੀਜ਼ਨਾਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸੋਚਿਆ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਅਨਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟਡ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਪੀਪਲ ਰਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਟ੍ਰੀਮਲਾਈਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਸੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਜਾਵੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਇਕਨੋਮੀ ਦਾ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਬਣ ਸਕਣ ਸੋ ਜੌਨ ਇਟਸ 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 ਅ ਗੁੱਡ ਐਫਰਡ and uh, good decision but you know when is go trickle through the government legislation will be put put in the parliament by the time it goes through the process what the process will take to get to the fruitation level yeah in this case I, i'm not convinced or not sure that legislation will be needed some of this can be dealt with through regulation through the ministry's authorities that already exist um there, what i was going to give as an example um about a year ago uh, it was identified in Toronto that there were people, um, particularly in the construction industry, who were working. We know that we have a huge shortage of construction workers. Yes. And so there was a pilot done um, of allowing uh, people who were these undocumented workers in the construction sector to get the documentation. There was a great success, and uh, I don't remember all of the numbers, but um, it, it was so uh, such an, of, uh, such interest. Um, I know those of us in Surrey were advocating to bring that pilot program to Surrey, mm -hmm. and uh, the minister said, "You know what? Let's take it <coughs> nationwide." And so uh, they just need to get some things organized. But the intention is to move forward very quickly. I would say that you know, for those of us. Um, from uh, large urban centers, which is where a lot of these people uh, have ended up because it's easier to hide here than in a small town. And uh, so we want to make sure that they're, they're protected, that they have all of those safeguards, yes. um, that they, the government's benefiting from their work for the, and, and collecting the taxes and things like that. And so I'm really uh, excited to see that th it'll be a national program. And when I go back to Ottawa at the end of this month, I'll be working with the minister to make sure that we can get it delivered uh, or happening as quickly as possible. Because not only um, you know, do we uh, need to protect those workers, but um, we need them uh, working. Sometimes they're working reduced hours. And so if we can have them working legally and, and they can work overtime, that can help with some of the labor shortages that we've also seen in Canada. So, I asked them to ask them to ask undocumented. I said that this process is through the government, through the legislation, and through the legislation. So, it's a lot of time. So, John said that we are working with the government and the government. Some of the regulations and the ministries are through the government. The rest of 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 the you know the people now i call it in a limbo neither they are not here they don't have a documentation or they overrun their stay yeah. and uh, on a temporary visa that expired when we go through this process and people hear about that the people in that situations is not a create another flux of people that will they supposed to leave canada and they will stay and nobody will bother them how that will work out yeah, it's a pretty I, I, uh, yeah, you're right you know we have to be careful about not setting up the wrong 
incentives for people to come to Canada and try to game the system, try to trick it. Yes. And so um, I, I think often there's like an amnesty period. So people who are here who can prove that they were in town, in, in the country by a certain point, will be protected. Um, but then you have to say, moving forward, we go back to the, you know, the fool rules. And so if you break those rules, you, you face deportation or And there have to be some yeah, yeah, checks absolutely. and balances. Absolutely. Otherwise, you know, but but in you know in this case the three hundred to six hundred thousand where we're talking about many of those workers have been here with they have families now they're established in the yeah. community they have businesses they're contributing members of society they just can't do it um, above board and so uh, you know and there'll be criteria to make sure that it's not um, you know people that, that um, shouldn't be here that are working that uh, get to stay and so security clearances all of those types of things will be done yeah. to make sure we have the right citizens uh, coming to Canada and and working here. But, um, you know, like I say, we've been involved in cases in my office where people are facing deportation because of these types of situations. Yes. And, uh, you know, often they have to go back to their home country, leave spouses and children behind or uproot them and take them back as they get the paperwork back in order. Why do that when they've been here, they've been contributing? Make it simple, show them dignity, show them respect for the contributions they've made. And, uh, and so that's really, I think, how this program will roll out. So, I have to say that the system is not going to leak, it is not going to be used or abused. I have to say that the check and balance is not going to be used. I have to say that the eventually the documentation is destroyed. I have to say that this program is not going to be used. But I have to say that the John is very careful to check and balance. I have to say that the John is not going to be used. I have to say that the John is नहीं तो हर कोई बंदा अपने तुरे आऊगा जिम्मे मर्जी पर इन जे जे ऑलरेडी आए हुए है जोड़े काम इतने कर रहे हैं पर इलीगली काम कर रहे हैं उन्होंने को डाक्यूमेंट्स प्रॉपर नहीं है सो यह चंगा उपराला भी उन्होंने स्ट्रीमलाइन करके एक तो इकोनमी का हिस्सा बन गए फिर उन्होंने जी प्रॉपर कवरेज वगैरह होगी सेफ्टी वगैरह होगी वह भी जी है ईकुअली इंपोर्टेंट हैगी है uh, another question we were ta talking before we started the show is, uh, you know, there is a lot of people that, uh, you know, we are welcoming in Canada, you know, war-torn countries, either mm -hmm. Ukrainians or in uh, Palestine, you know, in Gaza and uh, uh, Africa we were talking about. Yeah. So, you know, on one side, our country is a wealthy country, you know, helping people to immigrate here on a fast-track level. But then there is a Canadians, there is a big outcry that we are already stretched out to our limit with the infrastructure. How, how you will justify? Yeah. It, it's a, um, a really challenging issue, CJ, and I, I think you understand, and, and many of your viewers will understand the complexity. I think Canada as a rich nation has a, a global obligation to help people. And, and I think that the, the question is always, what's the right number? And so when we see these war-torn conflicts, um, Ukraine, as you say, as we um, see you know, awful situations evolving like we're seeing in the Middle East right now, the, the question we have to ask ourselves as government is, what is our role as Canada and as Canadians to help those areas? And, and you know, we know that there are costs. It takes time to um, settle uh, refugees. And so there are numbers that we have that um, for, for bringing refugees to Canada. But um, out of the numbers we have, we're building towards 500,000 immigrants per year. Um, we have you know, different parcels that are set out there. So we have the family unif reunification program. We have for refugees, we have for workers and skilled workers. And so there's all of these different pots. And um, you know, when it's, it's uh, re you know, refugees, we've uh, set a number of those that we think that we can bring into Canada. Uh, we, we've unfortunately heard some stories about um, you know, people not integrating or settling as quickly as possible. So, um, not having the homes, we need to make sure that we can actually find the accommodations. And that's why, back to the first conversation, <laughs> it's so important we build the housing so we can not only look after the Canadians who are here, but the immigrants that we need coming to Canada to help the, you know, grow the economy, to feed the workforce, uh, because we have an aging population. And, yes. um, and so uh, we need young people coming, our birth rates are not high enough. And, uh, and so, you know, that's why immigration is so important. Canada is a country built on immigration. That's not going to change. 
and, um, and, and, but it's making sure that as we bring in different um, groups, such as refugees, that we have the house and we have the supports so that they're not um, being seen as a drain. But I, I would say I'm also very concerned with some of the discussion we're having right now about closing the borders, not bringing anyone because of things like yes. housing shortages. Well, that was the more, what I hear on the street is yeah. people saying that, you know, our issues are burning issues enough. And, uh, you know, it's okay because we need a immigration to do that. Like we were talking about students come and a lot of temporary workers come, but there is no infrastructure there to support them. Right, and, and, and that's why we need to make sure that that infrastructure is, um, is keeping up with the population growth. And I would say that governments in Canada, um, at the federal, the provincial, and municipal level, um, you know, there was a period where we did not keep up. There was, you know, a focus on um, on making sure that we were being very, very fiscally conservative. That the balanced, uh, we had balanced budgets, and so we weren't making those investments in the, you know, not only the roads and water and sewer, but in housing and schools and hospitals and, and medical care. Yes. And, and so we're in a, a period right now of having to catch up and, and actually leap ahead. And that's why programs like the housing program we're talking about are so important today, um, that we can actually get massive programs. Uh, we talk about it being a warlike effort. So, um, you know, being able to do huge things quickly. Um, we're doing the same thing with healthcare. The investments that we're making right now is a, uh, another topic that we uh, might want to talk that about. That we'll discuss that. So, I asked John to ask that if there are any countries that have been in the unrest, Ukraine, Laos, Syria, and Gaza, the people of Africa, 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 the but is Galdi complained that we have to do a program. We have to do a infrastructure, a rent, a tani, and the cost is very high. So, we have to do a rich country, a mandate. We have to do a country, a pitch, 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 Oh, of the of this up now help karna jada ek hai gaya. So is it uh, when when we help people to you know come as a refugee or migrate because of those difficulties, is it a international some sort of uh, you know obligation uh, to take care of this issue? Yeah, well, and I think this is a discussion that as Canadians we need to have and that we often have. And I think countries around the world, particularly, um, you know, Western countries that, um, that we do this, uh, it's about trying to figure out what Canada's role is. Right now there are millions of refugees who are living in refugee camps. There are some that have been there for generations. And, uh, and, and it's like, is that what we want? It's the same uh, conversation as when we have homeless people in Canada. How do we get them hose housed? How do we give them the supports that they need? And, um, and, and so when we're looking at you know, bringing in people who have, are, are, have, are, have been displaced because of war, because of famine, because of floods, because of fires, um, and, and other issues that uh, um, affect um, humanity, um, what is Canada's role as a, a rich and, um, and, and a place that has been welcoming? And, uh, you know, so this is a very live discussion that we have uh, all the it's, time. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's why I say we have limits. And, um, and, and we realize that there is a cost. But there's also really, really good evidence that indicates that um, immigrants, and, and including refugees, when they come, that within, you know, a, a few years that they are, are caught up um, to where those who are born in Canada and raised in Canada are at. And in many cases, they go on to higher education, starting businesses, and are very successful. And so, you know, there's a short-term cost to get people here and, um, and, and, and established, but um, it, it pays off in the long term. And, and so uh, I, I would hate to see Canada close its doors and say no more refugees or, or to cut our immigration numbers because, you know, as, as a, an aging Canadian, I want to make sure that there's workers there that will help sustain the lifestyle that I've had growing up and that, uh, you know, my children and grandchildren and, and you know, all of our families will have. And we can't do that right now with the aging population and the declining birth rates that we have in Canada. We need immigration. That's a simple reality. So, our discussion is that the rest of the country is that we have to take as a refugee or whatever. So, John is saying that there are international obligations. There are all the government's obligations. There are all the people who can 
ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮੁਸੀਬਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆ ਪੀਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਚੰਗਾ ਪਾਣੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਾਫ ਏਅਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਰਿਚ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਿਲਟੀ ਇੱਕ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਓਬਲੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਵੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਲਿਆ ਜਾਵੇ ਤੇ ਬਾਕੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬਰਥ ਰੇਟ ਆਪਣਾ ਲੋ ਹੈ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਏਜਿੰਗ ਪੀਪਲ ਹੈ ਬੇਬੀ ਬੂਮਰਸ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਰਿਟਾਇਰ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਸੋ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਆ ਪੀਪਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਏਜ ਆ ਉਹ ਘਟਦੀ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਆ ਸੋ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਦੀ ਪਾਲਿਸੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਉਹਦਾ ਰੀਜ਼ਨ ਇਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਮੀਗ੍ਰੈਂਟਸ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਜੌਬਾਂ ਫਿਲ ਕਰਨੀਆਂ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਜੌਨ ਦਾ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਕਿ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹੁਣ ਕੰਸਟਰਕਸ਼ਨ ਇੰਡਸਟਰੀ ਹੈ ਕੰਸਟਰਕਸ਼ਨ ਇੰਡਸਟਰੀ ਇਜ਼ ਸਟਰਗਲਿੰਗ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਦੇ ਬੋਰਨ ਕਿਡਸ ਹੈ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਜੌਨ ਦਾ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਪੜ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਆ ਚੰਗੀਆਂ ਕਲੀਨ ਜੌਬਾਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਪਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆ ਯੂ نو ਦ ਹਾਰਡ ਹਾਰਡ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਪੀਪਲ ਇਨ ਕੰਸਟਰਕਸ਼ਨ ਯੂ نو ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਦੋਸ ਜੌਬਸ you know very hard to fill because you know everybody want to the kids born here or raised here they want to go on pursue the studies like you said yeah. and so it's it's a kind of you know discussion like you said john da kehna ki eh jehdi conversation hai eh karni bahut zaruri hai so one of the another you know when i talk to these young people and youth people the another comment and discussion point is if we are helping uh, on the other spectrum but lot of young people because of inflation they are struggling youth right. and lot of came um, you know as a student some are on a, on a work permit with a limited income with a price of renting and that's and there is some horror stories in brampton and surrey yeah, like they were camping out and living in those yeah. conditions is there possibility you bring up to help the youth to not living in this third world country conditions yeah it, it is something i think we should be very concerned about i i, I think that um you know we've heard from many post secondary institutions uh that um international students are a really important part of their economic model right now um they help pay for a lot of the programs that are being offered and so they are are asking us to be very cautious about limiting numbers of international students coming we want to make sure that they're looked after it's the same as the undocumented workers we can't have them taken advantage of and so when the international students come we need to make sure that first of all that they're able to sustain themselves to look after themselves so one yeah. of the measures we've taken is to actually increase the amount of money that they have to bring come to Canada with um to indicate that they can not only pay for tuition but that they have money for decent rent and uh good food and uh yeah and, but at least you know in the beginning john and then they can work 20 hours right and they scaling back from 40 hours to 20 yeah. hours yeah. because the focus should be on studies absolutely and, and that's one of the things that we had increased the um to 40 hours as somebody you know those of us in the workforce you know a, a full time job is often 40 hours a week and um and so if you're some, telling somebody that they need to study full time and work full time how do you do that and do it both well yeah. and so by i think scaling back it will it allow the international students to still subsidize or supplement their income but uh but not to be the only way of supporting themselves and um you know I, i've had discussions with some of the uh, post secondary in, uh, institutions um very few uh in in our region um actually have residents and so it's like can we actually uh, is there an appetite or an opportunity to build residences for students we know that many of them are out in the community and taking up uh, a lot of these um uh affordable uh, places some of them are not great in great condition but um you know it's like are, are they part of the uh, is there a solution there we can uh, have good international students coming because we also want to keep them here afterwards um uh, to be part of that uh, uh the workforce the Canada's future workforce and so how do we get them here how do we make sure that they succeed how do we make sure that um you know that we're not having to subsidize them through food banks and other programs yeah. um but uh, that they actually have a good quality of life and a good experience in Canada so that they want to stay and be contributing members to our society so dooja jada challenging issue apan sara nu pata jada communities main john nu puchya nu federal level bhi inna da ki hega hun apne jade undocumented di gall kiti hai us to alawa jade students hege ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਇੱਥੇ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਪਰ ਕਈ ਵਿਚਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਮਤਲਬ ਜਿਸ ਹਿਸਾਬ ਨਾਲ ਰੈਂਟ ਚੱਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕੰਡੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਕਹਾ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਯੂਥ ਲਈ ਕੋਈ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਜਾ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਫੰਡਿੰਗ ਜਾਂ ਹੋ ਦੇ ਕੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਹੈਲਪ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾ ਸਕੇ ਸੋ ਜੌਨ ਦਾ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਈ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਇਸ਼ੂ
ਐਡਰੈਸ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਆ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਹੁਣ ਥੋੜੀ ਜਿਹੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਡਿਪੋਜ਼ਿਟ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਉਹ ਵਧਾ ਦੇਣਾ ਆ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਦਾ ਸੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਿਸ ਇਨਫ ਹੋਣ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਆ ਕੇ ਇਨੀਸ਼ੀਅਲੀ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਐਟ ਲੀਸਟ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਦਮ ਐਂਡ ਫਿਰ ਬਾਕੀ 20 ਆਵਰਸ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਕੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਵੀ ਉਹਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੇ ਇੱਕ ਦੂਜੇ ਨੂੰ ਹੈਲਪ ਕਰ ਸਕਣ ਪਰ ਆਪਦੀ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਫਿਨਿਸ਼ ਕਰ ਸਕਣ ਸੋ ਇਸੇ ਇਸੇ ਏਜ ਲੌਂਗ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਵੈਨਵਰ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਇਜ਼ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਯੂ ਯੂ ਰੋਲ ਆਊਟ देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ पॉजिटिव्स बट ऑलवेज अ नेगेटिव साइड टू दीस इश्यूज एंड एंड स्टूडेंट्स वर वन ऑफ देम एंड देन लेटली आई हर्ड अ लॉट ऑफ फर्स्ट पीपल सेड वी डोंट हैव इनफ पीपल नॉट कमिंग and then i ask all the member of parliament now they said you are welcome you too many people right yeah. <laughs> so yeah. where to draw the line so, well, and that's the question where do you draw the line and, and i think that's where we've done a really good job as a government on on striking that right balance in um you know looking at the uh the opportunities that they bring uh, when people can move to canada but also you know to position them for success and um you know there are definitely some challenges but we're working on them and uh and i'm really uh pleased with the way the, the way our government is handling this and uh we're addressing those difficult issues and um you know international students is one of those <laughs> um, one of the many world um uh challenges that we're facing right now so ab meri gall ehi hoyi si ki kai vari kai program government ta leak diyan ya pehla ta welcome hunda unna da program change hunde par ode naal jehde ਕਈ ਵਾਰੀ ਉਹਦਾ ਬਿਊਜ਼ ਜਾਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਗਲਤ ਕੰਮ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਆ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪ ਦੀ ਟਰਾਈ ਕਰੀ ਦੀ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਬੈਲੈਂਸ ਆਊਟ ਕਰਨ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇਹ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਉਹ ਕਾਫੀ ਕੈਨੇਡੀਅਨ ਵੇ ਆਫ ਲਿਵਿੰਗ ਨੂੰ ਸਿੱਖ ਕੇ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਮੇਨ ਸਟ੍ਰੀਮ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਫਿਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਟੈਕਸ ਪੇਅਰ ਵੀ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਕਈ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਆ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਲੀਕੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਕੋਈ ਆਪਣੇ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਬੁਲਟ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਪਾਲਿਸੀਆਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਵੀ ਜੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ abuse or that now let's say switch on to the healthcare mm-hmm. little bit and you just mentioned too and your your wife is being a medical doctor so you know the government on a bilateral uh, agreements to bc gave about 1.2 billion my question always comes to all the member of parliaments and politicians like you give the money and at the same time the you know the wait times in the hospital is like out of control right. and your wife probably update you and yeah, tell you what's going on you see are the fullest mm. they've ever been it's uh, and uh, yeah and i sometimes go to visit somebody in the hospital and stuff and you feel so <laughs> bad that people are in hallways and they're struggling and people waiting like 4 6 hours what is your take on these yeah, you know, difficult issues <laughs> one of, one of the issues that we have in canada is that we have the highest spending in the g7 countries on medical care and yet some of the lowest outcomes and so what's the discussions we're having right now with the provinces we're saying we can't continue to throw money at the wall and hope it sticks and that uh, so we're saying you have to you know have some uh, accountability for this money that totally. we're giving yeah. and so wait times how do we actually get those wait times down how do we get um, you know certain illnesses um the the prevalence of them reduced in society how do we get um the wait times for cancer treatments and and these uh, you know very serious um uh illnesses addressed in a timely way we know surgeries hip and knee replacements it affects quality of life and so we're working with the provinces to um come up with a plan and then to actually show that they can uh, deal with those um those negative outcomes within the healthcare system so the, this money that we're giving uh it's you know beyond the regular health care can to health transfers we give and it's to um actually make improvements that i believe canadians will be able to see in the short term on uh, the quality of medical care we also know that you know we don't have enough nurses and doctors and all yeah. of the other people and so there's been some really really good work done with the federal government and the provinces and i would say you know let's all remember that the provinces have the primary responsibility um under the constitution to look after health care so the federal government tries to um to help and to make sure that we have a you know a standard that we're meeting across Canada so a lot of the money that we give is to make sure that the provinces are all operating at a standard level but um it's like how do we actually help with the mobility of medical personnel across Canada there've been lots of barriers um on how on licensing of nurses and doctors and and all of the others uh so work is happening there on the recruitment how do we not only train more doctors but how do we recruit ones uh, from uh, who have been trained internationally to a standard that we expect for the Canadian healthcare system 
How do we take, um, I, I hear lots of stories of um, particularly nurses and, and doctors from India, from the Philippines, from other countries that have very, very good training and they come to Canada and they're, they're not working in those professions. And a lot of them, the Canadian born kids, yes, went, yes. To, who, uh, went to those countries. Yeah. And now it's come back and come back and they don't have a residence. Exactly. And so uh, we're creating more of those uh, residency spots, funding the provinces and the, uh, the, the, um, uh, through the medical uh, system, uh, more uh, um, residency spots for those internationally uh, trained, um, either Canadians or others. So, so again, it's the federal government <laughs> uh, can support the work that the provinces are doing. And, and, and I think we, uh, once again, see in BC some really great work. We um, were an announcement recently in, uh, at the Kwantlen uh, campus in Langley where they're expanding the nursing program related to those who are trained internationally and just need to do some upgrading of their skills or credentials. And so we'll be able to get them into the into the workforce much more quickly than uh, the old system where they would have to go back and basically start over from scratch and do four years. And uh, so, so it's about working together with the provinces um, through this funding, but holding them accountable and, and doing things differently so we can get more people practicing and that's how we're going to help improve the uh, medical system for Canadians. So, I have a question about health care, I have a wait times, I have a lot of money. British Columbia 1.2 billion in an hour in and the tire. They had a wait time so the cut in area. Look you the charge of Cheche country, but a hall which bet here in there. So, Macabu who to see your program leak down the accountable on our brow. Taki, you know, basically, I ask all the, all the uh, politician John that you know, why don't uh, you know, for the let's see now the British Columbia sending their uh, cancer patients. To, to the states. To the states. How do you feel about that, being a federal universal health care system? Well, you know, that, that's very much a, a provincial decision. I think that when people um, are facing uh, cancer, uh, um, you know, it, 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 we need to make sure that we have timely treatment. And uh, I, I know through COVID, um, in many cases, people were afraid to go to the hospitals and, and didn't get the treatments they needed. So we're, in a, again, in a bit of a situation where the system is under pressure. And uh, the provinces decide that, you know, they can acquire additional capacity. You know, frankly, if there's no capacity here, we don't want people having to wait. And so um, I, I would gather that the province has done their work and said, you know, that we're at capacity and we need to, um, you know, bring in extra capacity. And in this case, it means having patients be able to access those services in Washington State and elsewhere. Um, is it ideal? No. But until we can actually build up that capacity um, through more hospital beds, more uh, oncologists and all the other specialties yeah. we need, um, we, we need to look at creative solutions. And so I, I think this is, you know, one solution. And, um, and it, it it's, um, hopefully is working for those that need treatment today and, and don't, uh, can't afford to wait a, a week or two weeks because of the kind of cancer they have. And, um, you know, but ultimately, I think, you know, we should be looking at, uh, after Canadians in Canada. Yeah, so, this is the story of health care. So, John, the Canada, this is the first of the credentials of the doctor and the residency, the sports, the nurses, ਉਥੋਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਆਈਆਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕੋਰਸਿਸ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਇੰਨੇ ਲੰਮੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸ਼ੋਰਟਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਟਰਾਈ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਹਰ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਪਰ ਇਹ ਨੂੰ ਫਿਲਟਰ ਥਰੂ ਹੋਣ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਦਾ ਫਾਇਦਾ ਦਿਖਾਉਣ ਤੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਕਾਫੀ ਟਾਈਮ ਲੱਗ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਅਬਾਊਟ 2 3 ਮਿੰਟਸ ਲੈਫਟ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਇਗਨੋਰ ਯੂਰ ਏਰੀਆ ਆਫ ਕਲਾਈਮੇਟ ਚੇਂਜ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਅ ਚੇਅਰ ਆਫ ਦ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਰਦਨ ਅਫੇਅਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਆਲਸੋ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਆਫ ਨੇਚਰਲ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਸ ਕਮੇਟੀ ਜਾਨ you know now the big you know mandate by the conservative party ms polyver is uh, you know complaining of carbon tax on the one side and that because of the affordability and gas prices are high and he want to demolish that on the other side how we balance that that we have a climate control that we need that and on the other side the politician for a short gain try to make these kind of policies or rolling out these policies? Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's really unfortunate that the um, Conservatives and uh, the leader of the opposition have um, taken on the carbon tax as the villain. Um, I, I think that as British Columbians we've seen climate change is real. <clears throat> the fires, the floods, the heat yeah. domes, all of these things we've seen. 
we, we have um, human-caused um, climate change, and, and, and scientifically that's been proven, so how do we deal with it? Nobody likes taxes. Um, I don't like taxes. I'm sure you don't like taxes. No, no. I'm sure none of your viewers like taxes. Mm -hmm. But it's been proven over and over and over again that a carbon tax is the cheapest way to deal with climate change. It, it affects um, behaviors. It, what, what the Conservatives are talking about are things like um, going after industry. Well, that um, will, you know, those costs get pulled, passed on to the consumer one way or another. We all are going to pay for the effects of climate change. And so a, a carbon tax... Um, you know, we've had it in BC since 2008, and, and it's unfortunate that this discussion is now raising into question um, the carbon tax in BC, which has been looked at internationally as a leading way of dealing with climate change and, and an effective way of dealing with it. So I, I think that um, I would rather have us talking about how do we actually deal with uh, you know, climate change, what are the solutions we need, and while well, recognizing that um, the carbon tax is the cheapest way of creating this kind of incentives um, for consumers and, and industry to deal with this problem that is, um, it, it costs us billions of dollars every year by not dealing with it. And um, so uh, I, I think it's irresponsible to be having the conversation that we're having. <laughs> I think, you know, let's get to the solutions and, um, and, and recognize that a price on pollution, um, such as a carbon tax, is part of the mix of things that we need to do. So, man, and put Chasiga Gijari, a carbon the policy hagi, a other inflation hagi, a carbon the policy garca, pretty gas hagi, a mengi hagi. So, in a Kime balance out of conservative party that he you know the Hagaya mandate be a scene in cancel cardena. So, John the Kanaki Sarano Sasta Trika did a climate change, a behavior change currently, carbon tax did a Sarano Sasta, you did a climate upon Patai Yagam. Flooding, hagi hai, jale, uh, apne storm jale aa rahe hai. So, we have climate nu control karna pehna. Thi, oda effect pehna hai. So, John, we have a couple of minutes. Uh, what do you like to say as your final comments? Sure. Well, you know, one of the things we didn't get to talk to you about uh, today, CJ, that I'd like to do uh, just a bit of a pitch on is the dental care program that we're rolling yes, out. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this is one that hopefully all viewers will um, be aware of. But uh, it's a, uh, a new national dental care program. It's going to be for individuals earning $90,000 or less. We're encouraging people to file their taxes uh, this year um, for, uh, for 2023. Um, right now, the intake is happening uh, for seniors age. Well, actually, in December, it was seniors age 87 and above. This month, it's going to be seniors age 77 to 86. In February, seniors age 72 to 76. March, seniors 70 71. Um, May, seniors age 65 to 69, and then adults with a disability will be happening over the summer. Children under the age of 18, because right now it's only children under, under 12, 12. Yeah, yeah. Um, will be starting in June of 2024. And then by 2025, all remaining eligible Canadians will be brought into that system. So um, I would say that any seniors who out there in particular who um, have filed their taxes, who may be under the $90,000 uh, threshold, um, should they'll be getting contacted by Service Canada. Um, we want to make sure that people are also aware that, you know, with these types of programs, there are scams. We want to be make sure, you know, have people be careful about it. If anybody gets a call and they're not sure, call my office, call Suka Rendi or Ken's offices, and um, you know, we can help uh, provide information. But this is a huge program for Canadians. I'm really proud that our government is delivering it. And um, so if anybody wants information on the dental care program that's coming, um, and seniors will start benefiting from that you know, today. And uh, that's a, another great news story that I, I wanted to close with is, uh, as we start January, and also say Happy New Year to all of your viewers and wish everybody <laughs> a very healthy and prosperous 2024. Thank you very much, John. You're always kind enough to come on my show. And we openly discuss all the issues, so greatly appreciate your time. So, Sadi Kalabat Charisi, John Aldog, Jedeki, Cloverdale, Langley City, Member of Parliament, and the Vichin and Dental Program, Bare the Siagi Pella, Barasalto, Talejid, Niane, Unalita Free, Kitaya, the people, ninety thousand to cut Jedi Unadi income, Unan eighty seven year old, the Utuda Shuru Karta program, for Holly Holly, it trickle down and goes. For everybody, Sarah and the help Karnge. So, Ace Trang is program the which feedback Juru de Agro of the comment page de Agro, Miri Facebook, the via program live Chaldaya, the Othe to see comment of the page Sagdangi, Kestran the program, Kestran the Azi, 
ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗੈਸਟ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਈਏ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਵੱਧ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਤੱਕ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਪਹੁੰਚਾ ਸਕੀਏ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫੇਰ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਹੈਪੀ ਨਿਊ ਇਅਰ ਬੈਸਟ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਹੈਪੀ ਹੈਲਥੀ ਇਅਰ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਵੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਵਧੀਆ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਵੀ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਦੇ ਕਮਾ ਰਾਈ ਆਪਾਂ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਪਾ ਸਕਨੇ ਬੀ ਐਮ ਪੋਜ਼ਿਟਿਵ ਰੋਲ ਮਾਡਲ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਾਂ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਵਧੀਆ ਤੇ ਸੋਹਣਾ ਬਣਾਈਏ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਹੱਥ ਪਾਉਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸੁਣਦੇ ਰਹਿਆ ਕਰੋ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਸੀਜੇ ਸਿੱਧੂ ਸ਼ੋ ਐਵਰੀ ਥਰਸਡੇ 7 ਟੂ 8 ਓਕਲੋਕ 